What are you doing? What are you doing? Hi. Hello. This would be the alpaca farm dogs. Hi, puppy. Today is April 1st, or at least the day that you're going to be watching this. And this is officially our third anniversary of living in the, of Airstream. Living in the Airstream. So in this video, we're each going to tell you three things that we've learned three. about living in an Airstream. I think there may be more than that, but we'll definitely be telling you all of the things we've learned over the course of these three years about living in the Airstream. We're going to tell we you like. three or more things <laughs> that we've learned about living in an Airstream. And I this, don't want to limit us. This is, April, this is April Fool's, but this video will have nothing to do with April Fool's Day. Unlike the buying a yurt video, yeah. link below to that one. Some people got upset because they couldn't make it through a two minute video on April <laughs> Fool's Day. We're not buying a yurt. We're not buying a yurt. We never have uh, bought a yurt. Okay, so we're okay. going to get going, leave this harvest host, start a travel day, and um, tell you about what we've learned about living in our Airstream, which we love. First things first for me, Airstreams are notorious for not having much storage. So we've learned that we got to use the back of our truck as part of our storage. A lot of bigger RVs like fifth wheels and class A's have these basements, they call them, where they have like slide out trays, slide out bays that you can store all kinds of stuff underneath where you're walking inside. But as you can see, this guy has nothing bupkis. What it does have is back here, this little area, but as you can see, there's really not much there. And all this area is actually under the bed. So as you can see, we have as much crammed back here as we can, but this is basically our only outdoor accessible storage in the Airstream. And just to show you that we're serious here, nothing. This was a little opening to underneath the nook that we took out, but even this, when, when it was functional, was very, very small. So, ba boom our garage is all back there and that would be underneath in the basement if we had that storage, but we don't. Hi, Penny. Hi, Penny. Penny likes the Airstream and so do we, but no rig that you're gonna buy is gonna be absolutely perfect, so we made this thing exactly the way it needed to be to work for us. So to include my desk, ripped out the dinette, put the desk in with the dinette, it came out to about here. So it really felt a little bit cramped in this area and it wasn't a good working environment. So this was a big improvement. We ripped out the old flooring and there was carpet on this side, ripped that out too and put in some better floors. Yeah, which are a mess right now, but that's the whole point, they get messy. Um, and carpet was a pain in the butt. So now we have the nice, easy cleanup. We converted our toilet to a composting toilet because we like to boondock and be places like here at this alpaca farm and not have to worry about hookups, which is also why we put a whole bunch of solar on the roof and we can live completely off grid for up to a couple weeks at a time if we really want to. So that has been a pretty cool upgrade to our Airstream. And like Steve said, although we love our Airstream, nothing, just like any home, you got to make it adjust for what you want to be able to do. And the Airstream being so compact and easy to move has made it so that these little improvements have made it so we can go anywhere, almost anywhere. Another thing I like about the Airstreams is the fact that they're small, they're short, they're more skinny, so you can just get more places. And getting out of this spot, actually, we're going to have to maneuver around those trees, and there are some small limbs that really we shouldn't have to worry about because this guy is so short. But short also means that our clearance underneath is quite frankly not all that great. You've seen us bottom out in some of our other videos especially the one in Sun Valley, Idaho. We were dragging on the back of this thing entirely. That was not fun. So it's low to the ground. It's small, which is good, but you don't have a lot of clearance either, which can be really bad if you're in tight areas or places with dips and divots and things like that. with us. Yeah. He 
<laughs> We're having a a, a, a bye bye. You can run fast. Another great thing about the Airstream, it's pretty easy to tow. Welcome to Sweet Home Alabama. We decided to stop off at the Alabama Welcome Center for a little pee break. We might take the girls out too, because look at all of this grass. We haven't had that much grass in a while. But look at this, look at this welcome center. All this space for big rigs and trailers. Very nice, Alabama, very nice. Hi, Patty. Another thing I like about the Airstreams are they don't have slide outs, which makes situations like this easy. Because sometimes when you have slide outs and you need to stop off and go to the bathroom for whatever reason, well, because you have to pee. <laughs> Um, getting maneuvering around the rig, they're designed to have the slide outs out. And sometimes it's tough to get from like from the kitchen back to the bathroom or a bedroom or when your slide outs fridge. are in. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Get to the fridge. So this, there's no slide outs. It's, it's designed to be lived in just like this when we travel, which makes getting around really easy. It means we pull into a rest stop and we are home. We can cook dinner, we can cook lunch, we can go to the bathroom, we can bring dogs right in, don't have to worry about slides or anything else. Super convenient. Hi, Penny. Come on. Pins. Come on. Come here. Come here, Pins. Hey, 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 Patty, I got you. Don't want you jumping out. You'll hurt yourself. Do we have a bag for them, Dad? Yes. There's one that's already pulled in the back of the truck. This is a very nice little welcome center. Lots of space. They have water. They have water. They have a dump somewhere. I don't have a rig. All right, we got some customers. Both girls are done. So you can see, we also easily fit in a truck parking spot with plenty of room to spare. I know you want to go on the airstream. There you go. Not there yet, girl. All right, a little more than halfway there. We are now officially in Alabama. Let's go. And then you're gonna pass the Cracker Barrel and turn in right after it. If people are, if we can get in here, there's spots. There's people parked in them right there. Okay, so I don't know how much of that footage worked out, but we got to the Cracker Barrel in Bessemer, and it was very busy, which is, I guess, what we should expect on a Sunday afternoon. And we didn't quite feel comfortable. We, we couldn't get the Airstream into the parking spots because there were a bunch of cars parked in the RV spots. So we weighed our options. It's always good to have good backup plans and decided, why don't we just call the state park we're going to tomorrow for the summit and see if they have any open spots, because we're only about two hours away. So we did. And they do. Let's go all the way. Exactly. It makes for a long day today, but then tomorrow is easy. Yes. So it looks like they probably won't have our spot, but just moved in spots in the campground, easy peasy. Um, yeah. I'm looking at the clock, and we'll be there and unhitched and ready to go. I have happy. Yeah. So the Airstream normally would have made something like this a lot easier. If those cars weren't in those spots, we probably would have been fine. But um, you, do, you just gotta roll with it. That's RV life. Cars and RV spots. I should have put that in my Tuesday talk. <laughs> we just pulled in a Lake Guntersville State Park. So Court is gonna check us in and that gives me an opportunity to tell you something else. When you're in an Airstream, People just assume that you're rich because you have, Patty, stop messing with the windows. I think it was three weeks ago when we were in Pearland, I was talking to some guy outside the, uh, in, in the campground and he asked me where we were in the campground. And I said, well, we're the Airstream over there. And his response was, oh, it must be nice to be rich. And no, we're, we're not, I mean, yeah, I, I would imagine it is, but we're not rich. We bought our Airstream 10 years old used, which I highly recommend in general for anybody, especially if it's your first rig. Um, but you get, you get 
I think everybody kind of assumes that you are rich because Airstreams aren't the cheapest, but they're also not the most expensive either. I've been told I need to come take a look at the location of the drawer inside. All right, let's do this. Oh, a little bit of a problem there, but not bad. Oh, looky there. <laughs> it came clear out. <laughs> it did. Oh it boy. It popped off too this time. Yep. Bump of roads. <sighs> we're finally here. We're at the RV Entrepreneur Summit. We're here a day early. Um, so all the speakers are in one row up there. Um, that spot opens up tomorrow. Since the Cracker Barrel didn't work out tonight, we, did, we just decided to, to come up here. We got another spot just for one night, so we're gonna stay hitched up, then move tomorrow to our spot with all the other speakers. And um, long day today, but it'll make tomorrow nice and easy. Check out this campground. It, it accommodates all different sizes of rigs from the largest, most expensive Prevos to a tiny, that's probably a 16 footer there. And of course, our 30 foot Airstream Classic. And another nice thing I like about the Airstreams is we have 40 pound propane tanks, which means we are switching those out or refilling them less often and it's kind of a less of a pain that way. Isn't that right, Penny? Less of a pain for propane. Yeah. As you can see, we have our chairs airing out from all the moisture they got in Louisiana. Look at that sun. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. Talk about how how easy it is to make to make friends out here. It is. So no matter what rig you're in, when you pull into a campground, you have almost immediate friends. Like people walk around, they talk, they see you doing something outside, you're automatically talking to people. Uh, it's even more so for us with an Airstream because other Airstreamers immediately come up to us and start talking to us about our Airstream and it's just like this community that is really cool. We could sniff them out. We, we drive into this campground and and we could, okay, there's an Airstream over there. Behind that tree, you can't see it, but I know there's an Airstream there too. I'm not like that, but, <laughs> but it is still pretty cool how connected the um, RVing community is. We're trying a new drink tonight. This is cucumber and gin. And what else is in this? Lime and club soda. Lime and, and club soda. Liqueur. Hey. Hey. Stop being a loudmouth. Stop being a loudmouth. Yes, you too. It's based from the Fleur de Lis cocktail that you had at the carousel bar. That's right. And it's green for St. Patty's Day. <laughs> All right. Say goodbye to our beautiful audience. Bye everybody. Hope you enjoyed our moving day and all the things we love about our Airstream. It's been an awesome, awesome, awesome three years. And uh, hope for many more experiences to come. We'll see you next time. Bye guys. Oh, and subscribe if you want to see the many experiences to come. <laughs> Good one, Courtney. Good one. <laughs> and if you want to see the stuff around Guntersville, next couple of videos. Yeah.